Well, as COVID cases continue to rise, health officials say there's a new variant that will likely become dominant nationwide. It's called BQ 1.1. And joining me now is Dr. Dean Winslow from Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for joining us. So how do the symptoms of BQ 1.1 differ from the other Omicron variants? Yeah, so it's a, a little unclear, but I think most of us feel that it tends to cause more uh, what we think of as upper respiratory or common cold sort of symptoms. And whether that's a, 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 a you know, due to the fact that many people have at least partial immunity to uh, to this variant because of either prior infection and or vaccination um, it is, is a little bit unclear. Uh, but I think we're definitely seeing a little bit more mild disease uh, with this variant than we did with the original Wuhan variant. Uh, but again, you know, the reasons for that, it's not really clear how much of it is due to the pathogen being different versus uh, partial immunity that many, many of us have. And so how effective are the new booster shots against this variant? So it's a little bit of a complicated answer. I think the good news is, though, is that the uh, uh, new bivalent booster uh, provides really excellent protection against serious illness, hospitalization, and death, uh, which is the key thing. It's less effective against uh, uh, actually preventing infection itself. Um, however, I still strongly recommend uh, folks uh, get fully vaccinated and boosted. What about people gathering for, for the holidays? I mean, should we be taking precautions now or, or are, we, are we past that? You know, it's a tough thing. And again, we're coming up on almost three years, you know, since the first cases of Omicron were recognized in the U.S. And I think everyone, including me, you know, we're tired of of uh, dealing with uh, uh, of dealing with, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 virus. However, um, you know, I think most of us, though, at least in the field of infectious disease, are still very careful about avoiding real crowded indoor environments and wearing uh, masks as much as possible when indoors. You know, having said that, though, you know, it's still important for families to get together and um, celebrate um, uh, this, this time of year. So it's a real, uh, a real tricky answer. And I don't really have yeah. uh, you know, very clear guidance other than just, you know, try to avoid as much as possible, you know, crowded indoor uh, uh, events. And the CDC estimates that one in five people who get COVID will develop long COVID symptoms. So do you see this becoming a, a public health crisis? Well, it may or may not be. You know, we still don't know um, how long these you know, long COVID symptoms are going to last, uh, but it is concerning. In fact, I actually read a report just the other day that as many as 45% of people with uh, clinical uh, COVID-19 infection uh, may go on to having long COVID symptoms. Um, however, the you know full economic impacts as well as just the health impacts of this, I think are still you know, you know, a little bit too early to be determined. All right. Well, always good information. Dr. Dean Winslow from Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Have a good holiday, sir. You too.